Survivor Special is Phil and Alexa are back, and so is Survivor. Survivor 41 is in the books, at least the premiere, not the whole season. Don't worry, everybody. <laughs> Although for two contestants, the entire season is in the books, which I was very surprised at, that we saw two people booted tonight, especially I know with a sped-up season it makes sense, but uh, being that it was the premiere and we still have to get 13 full episodes, we don't generally see double boots, I guess, but sometimes we do. Um, but anyway, we got 13 weeks of this or however many weeks it is. Tonight we see the uh, the end of Abraham and Sarah. And I got to be honest, our boy JD, I was really concerned about. I was uh, nervous. Things weren't looking good for him at all. But I was not surprised to see Abraham go. And ultimately, when they started throwing Brad's name around, even though Sarah was kind of my girl before the season began, I did end up liking Brad a lot more than I thought I was going mm -hmm. to once he actually got out there. So I was kind of happy with how that went. But uh, Alexa, you're fresh off party time. How's everything going? I am fresh off party time. Um, I... I'm going to be honest, I couldn't hear a lot. So I have some very discombobulated notes. I will tweet them out tomorrow because I think they're pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I cannot speak to confessionals. I can really speak to visuals. Um, so this will definitely be, wow, McKenna Feeney, I don't even know how you're watching this. You were at a bar <laughs> literally 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Maybe she's still there. <laughs> I am very confused. Um, but yeah, party was awesome. Um, a lot of people were super, super helpful um, with just explaining things to me that I missed. I found a corner to sit and watch the second half. Um, yeah, I met a bunch of patrons. Um, so that was really cool to meet people live. Um, it's been great. So hopefully we'll have some really fun guests coming up in the next uh, next couple of weeks. We have an amazing guest who is not there tonight uh, lined up for Sunday, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, but everyone was hyped. I mean, everyone was really hyped. I'm not to jump to the end. People were very upset at how and when Sarah went home. What there were a, lo a lot of groans, a lot of as honestly, as soon as her card stuck up, stood up, people were people were not having it. No. And and so I so I have a lot to say about this episode. Uh, I watched it sped up. And I'm <laughs> also part of the reason why this is so late tonight. But um, I thought that the way that CBS and Survivor and the editors and the producers put this together was incredible. And mm -hmm. I never say that. I haven't said that in years about how well I thought this was done. Yeah. I didn't mind the fourth wall breaks. I know there's going to be people who are going to complain about, but at the end of the day, I got friends who were texting me complaining about it. They've been texting me complaining about Survivor for the last 10 years. Why are you watching? I loved that they took these risks and they took these chances and they really bought into this idea of this is new. This is going to be something different. I liked the flashes to the family. Mm -hmm. That's why this Sarah thing sucked because we already knew Sarah on a personal level because we saw her with her grandmother and heard her story, which by the way, Sarah was a MVP for the prop bet game, even though. She oh my God. She episode. hit it all. She was across the board and she got less than five votes and she cried and everything. There's <laughs> so much in this episode though. And they do such a great job of giving us something for each of these people for explaining the, the new elements of the game. And, and I like the risks that were taken. And at the end of the day, I've said this all off season for the last 18 months. If you're relying on the end of the episode, on the vote being the best part of the episode, Survivor is not a good product. And that's what we've seen in a lot of recent seasons. But when the rest of it is so good that when you don't get the people going home that you want, or in the case of tonight, two pretty unexciting boots. Eric, you could tell by, he said he was blindsided, but by his, his composure at Tribal, I thought it was a no doubt he was going home. And you have Sarah go home in a situation where all of a sudden they throw Brad's name out. And it was like, hey, that's not going to happen. So I thought that the first hour and 47 minutes of this episode was amazing. <laughs> and at the yeah. end of the day, that's when Survivor is at its best. Who cares that Abraham and Sarah were the first two boots on the season? They went out 18th and 17th. It's about building up what we're coming to watch for the rest of the season. We are going to get character moments. We are going to get actual survivor elements to this game. And we have a really good cast on our hands that was really well edited. So that's my big, long-winded take. But Alexa, what do you got here? I I was really big on this editing, too. I think they – I like the risks that they took. And I think, for what it's worth, I think they benefited, benefited from the fact that 
we all wanted this for so long, so badly, but I think they really leaned, leaned into how much we missed this. I think for the super fans, they showed us a lot of behind the scenes stuff, which is, was really, really cool to see for newer fans. I actually got a bunch of texts tonight from like Netflix pandemic friends from friends who just started watching the summer. And I was like, do you think this is confusing? What do you think? And they were like, no, it, this is a game. And Jeff, Jeff came out and um, I don't know if he ever said the word monster, but he did say the word fun. And yeah. I know that he, um, you know, he came out with an article and said that Mike White yelled at him because Survivor wasn't fun anymore. He really made it fun. And like, we can talk about the game within the game. And this is, this was a Jeff, this was a whole Jeff episode, but it did, I didn't mind it. I really liked it because I, I really saw Jeff's passion for the show and I think it was channeled really in the right way. There's a lot of twists and I'm very confused. However, I'm really excited. And to your point about we lost Sarah, but we, we felt something about her. And I thought these flashbacks were really great because this is a way to spend minimal time, still save time, give people backstories and, still have like in-game content. I think that was a really good flow. Mm -hmm. um, we got to learn about Tiffany. We got to, you know, we got to learn about so many people. Um, JD had a really long one. I think that was just a really cool different way other than a confessional of someone getting emotional and then talking about their past. I thought, um, I, th I thought that was really nice. Um, I, I have more to say, but I'm, I, I'm really happy. I'll jump, I'll jump in to save you. Um, what I thought, this episode felt that I probably haven't felt since season 20. Honestly, it felt fresh. And this season could crash and burn. There is no doubt about it. Everything could go wrong with this. The twists, this shot in the dark thing could be a total disaster. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having to give up the flint, all of that stuff, that might not work. I personally love it. I think it's a great idea, but that might not work. But ultimately, what I think set this apart from other premieres is that it actually felt like something different. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, we still watched 18 people go out, compete in challenges, talk to each other, build alliances, do whatever. There wasn't a single idol. Yeah. There was this weird summit thing that we had. And we watched two people get voted out at the end. But it felt like something different. And that at the end of the day is what we needed from this show. And whether that's because of the cast, whether that's because it's 26 days, whether that's because whatever, to me, it just feels like <laughs> everybody is taking chances, uh, including Survivor, and it's working. And it feels fresh. And JD's in the chat. And it's about time. JD, Stop. tell me how to pronounce your name, please. For the love of God. Yeah, me well, I mean, we can just do JD now. Luckily, but I want to know how to pronounce the real one. <laughs> yeah, because we have been probably very disrespectful to your name. Literally <laughs> since your name's been out. But anyways, this is this is what I was going to say. In terms of the pacing, I, I remember like when I, I, along with many other people, heard this would be a two-hour premiere with two boots. And I was like, oh, it's going to be the usual thing. I like how they had two people go home in the second half because that did that created a lot of the buildup we had reasons to understand why abraham and sarah went home um no idols which was great tbd on if they will appear later in the season i have to assume they will but i know this is something a lot of people a lot of people have talked about of will we get to a point in survivor where every person just starts with an idol mm -hmm. and then maybe there's just no other idols ever rehidden so it's just your one and done this shot in the dark feels like their way of doing that without being as extreme i think it, i think it's less extreme 16 slash 17 percent whatever it is those are not good chances that that is kind of a shot in the dark so i i like that it isn't here's an idol um but i also like that this entire episode was not about idols well, um, and I am confused about this vote stuff because I'm I could not hear a lot about it. So very confused that. about shot in the dark is shot in the dark. A one-time deal for each player. 
That's my biggest thing. Because I a, think so. It has to be. Because otherwise, why would you not play it every time? But at the same point, um, I don't mind this. And I might mind it later in the game when whoever is the Suri Fields of this season gets the middle finger and so do the fans at the same time. But I don't mind this right now because I think it's a good way to bring us this whole idol type thing without having to have idol hunts at the end of the day, this shot in the dark took up three seconds of the show. Mm -hmm. Could it become like this deus ex machina? Yeah, it absolutely can. It absolutely can. But I'm okay with how they're looking at it right now. I don't mind how this is looking. It gives you a chance to save yourself. It prevents, it might prevent the super boring. You're on the wrong side of the numbers. You have no chance. Like we saw in the early seasons, while still allowing Survivor to edge its way back towards the early seasons. Because this whole episode had a very old school feel to it. Mm -hmm. And and we haven't had that feel in a long time. With all of the advantages that were thrown in here, I still felt like, though breaking the fourth wall for all those haters out there who are old school I Survivor liked fans. It. But, but here's my thing, Alexa, you and I can't stand this season, really, in the grand scheme of things. Uh -huh. But for those of you who are the old school purist Survivor fans, just remember, in season one, Jeff breaks the fourth wall about 9,000 times. So don't sit here and tell me how great season one was and how shitty season 41 is because he's breaking the fourth wall. Because at the end of the day, he said, drop the four, this is a new era. And I think that he really bought into that and said, what are some things that are kind of callbacks to the earlier seasons that are going to be fun for these players? But instead of having to explain to them that every three days, one of the two tribes will go and Greg Butis will steal a coconut phone. <laughs> it was, let's have some fun with this and let's play the game with you. Um, I will be disappointed this season if there is not a talking conch shell or a chest of cash we have next time. to Jeff. That's that's really the callback that we need. But yeah, I completely agree with you. I think this this had an, an old school feel with very, very new school editing. I think, um, you know, they did something that people have it doesn't happen super not super often, but people have really liked where Tiffany's floating around. She's looking for this thing in a tree and they do the flash that Jeff, like Jeff just walked around and dropped this thing in the tree. I don't really know what it was. Was it an advantage or did it mean, was it something specific? It was some beware clue or advantage or something. I don't really know what it was, but okay. I guess we'll end up seeing at some point. Okay. Um, so it's still TBD. It's still something that's TBD. And, but again, we had a new advantage planted by the production team that wasn't actually involved in the first episode. That never happens anymore. Sorry. Someone's here. Just dropping facts. I had to, well, just, he's trying to know. text us and you know, it's like, yeah, James, man, we're, we're trying busy. to live we're lives, talking. You know? we're trying to live um, my life, James. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what, what was I saying here? Oh yeah. But I think like, I, I couldn't catch a lot of the summit thing, but um, I know that first of all, this episode, JD, hi, this episode is all about JD, like up, up and down. He was everywhere, but I feel like what I assume I heard when he was like walking up to that hill, um, it has him sweating and he's like, I've trained so much for this. And then it has the cameraman like following him. It was just, it was it made you feel like you were there. It made me yeah. feel like if, if, like if I'm walking up this hill, like this is how I feel. I really have never felt that in my I, podcasting. So, time. so here's the thing. I think because of COVID and the restrictions on who, how many people could go into Fiji and whatever, I think they were short crude. I think that's why this felt a little bit more like season one because all these slow motion shots of people smiling and all of these, all of these moments of them talking about their families and just sitting there. I don't think they have as big of a crew out there as they have had in the past seasons, pretty much every season since season yeah, two, I think they've had a right. massive crew. And I think that's actually helped it because it's made them become a little bit more creative. The one thing that we can all agree on, whether you love Island of the Idols, whoever you are, Tommy's mom, whether you love Edge of Extinction because you're Chris Underwood's mom, or if you love David versus Goliath because you're actually a Survivor fan, <laughs> the one thing that we can all agree on is that they weren't they weren't at all unique from each other. Yeah, Edge of Extinction has this twist, which is they go here. But it all started to feel like Survivor was getting complacent. This episode felt like they weren't getting complacent, and they needed to change things up mainly because their hand was forced. Mm -hmm. And look at what's happening here. Alexa, you're a massive football fan. 
Bill Belichick can do whatever he wants when he's got Tom Brady. He loses Tom Brady. Now he's got to figure out what he's going to do. Now you got to answer for yourself too. Now you got to work. How are you going to figure it out? We have Mac Jones. This is Survivor with Mac Jones. After the Brady era, (laughs) after Brady got really stale and threw a pick six at the end of his last playoff game in New England. You know what I mean? So like, this is (laughs) all of these. I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to go farther with it. So I was going to say like, oh, well, where did Tom Brady go? But I don't really know where he didn't go to big brother. That's for sure. But he went to, but he went to Tampa and maybe survivor right now, maybe survivors actually Tom Brady got a little complacent, moves on to Tampa and has found a new championship swag because that's it. I feel like tonight's episode, um, there were so many things that might not actually be original if you actually break it down. The whole prisoner's dilemma. We all know if you did economics, if you did games, mm-hmm. or if you did anything like that, you know the prisoner's dilemma. Even if yep. you just probably watched a TV show in your life, you know this. Yeah. And they did it so well, though. And we got to know these characters, Xander, JD, and Danny, and who they are as people, and who's the risk taker, and who's not, and how close they were to actually all losing their votes. It's very, very interesting. And I'm all about these things. If this Mm -hmm. season is a dud, you have our excitement, Survivor, so you can be a dud. That's okay. But take the chances now because you're going to get people who are a lot more excited about it. So, so with that, can we, t- can you tell me a bit about the prisoner's dilemma? Um, I know the concept. Can you tell me a bit about how it went with the three of them? Yeah. Um, because I saw at tribal council, it, whatever they did, they did it correctly because they, they got their extra vote. What was, yeah. What so, was that? So the way that it worked was if all three of them put protect their vote, they would all protect their vote. If they all put risk your vote, they would all lose their vote. If one person or two people put protect your vote, whoever put risk your vote would get an extra vote while everybody else would keep their votes. Mm -hmm. So Danny kept his vote. He protected it. Xander risked his and JD risked his, but they didn't tell us JD risked his until we actually got to tribal council. Xander, we knew risked his because when Xander went back to his tribe, he told them everything that happened and said, this vote is for us. I am going to use this for our tribe so we can take down these other tribes in the future. And I thought that was a really good strategy. Yeah, I like that. JT did a really, or JD did a really bad job of explaining it, but he got lucky in his survive here because of everything else. Uh, Danny just seems like a straight shooter. Gotta be honest, Danny might be my favorite player on the season after this episode, which I was not expecting. Also, apparently, Danny, this insider info from our good friend Adam, Danny apparently is a massive survivor fan has and has been wanting to get on the show for a really long time, which I think is not something people did not expect. expect. Danny yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree. So between Danny Xander and JD, Danny didn't take the chance, but Danny was taking the chance looking for an idol early in the episode with Deshaun, but then still balled out and finished up the challenge and got his tribe, the Flint. I was a big fan of Danny, but that's how the prisoner's dilemma went down. So JD okay. and Xander have extra votes. Xander's tribe knows Xander has an extra vote or knows that he did risk his vote. So there's the chance JD's tribe doesn't know that JD risked his vote that he told them that he protected his vote. So he's a snake in the grass, but he is still in the game. And there you go. Still in the game. So you said he, he didn't explain it great was it just like kind of the the nervousness stumbling over or like trying to create the lie he didn't explain it badly but he was already with a group of people who didn't trust him and he explained it not well enough and he explained it in a way where they're going "Mm, i don't trust this guy i don't blame them and i'm gonna be honest if i was on the ua tribe and i don't know what went on for the other 48 hours or whatever that we didn't watch tonight but if I'm on the UA tribe, I probably would have cut JD based on what he was saying. However, there must yeah. have been something more with Sarah than just that she sucked at that puzzle. Because to vote out somebody who blows a puzzle on day three is like the like she says, the 2000 way of thinking. It's it doesn't make sense in today's yeah. day and age. If you like the person, keep them. I mean, JD didn't he didn't even get a vote tonight. No. If I'm if I'm hearing he that correct, if I'm, Ricard yeah. did. I don't know where that came from, but he did. I think Jeannie was probably pissed. confused and also probably pissed. Like I, I, I feel like th- there's a handful of players we didn't get to hear much from, and they were Jeannie and Jeannie and Brad. I think were two of them. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll see why Jeannie voted for Ricard, but I wouldn't be shocked if she was just like, well, he literally just stood up and said Brad. Was there any there was like no any context? Yeah, I was about to ask, like, why? 
why I know we've all been loving Ricard, but why? What and, was and the... I worry. So Ricard is going to be a villain on this season. There's no doubt about it. Which is it. fun because I think Which no one calls that. Nobody called that. He is going to be a villain on this season without a doubt. If I'm Brad, I'm looking at Ricard going, yo, buddy, I got you. The hell time. you doing? Because why are you throwing my name out there? And hey, Brad that's seems very inoffensive. Go. So what I love about Brad and, and I actually said to Rachel tonight, I was like, man, that was badass like Boston Rob. And I couldn't believe I Whoa. said those words. But when he went and straight up told Chantel and Sarah that one of them should go, I was like, and he didn't do it in a way though, that seemed like he was clueless to the game. He did yeah. it in a way where it seemed like, Hey, I'm just going to tell you because like at this point, there's nothing you can do about it. It almost felt like Aris telling Melinda back <laughs> on in final 15 of Panama. There was just something about it where I was like, yo, there's something about this that I kind of like. And so I don't like that Ricard threw Brad's name out there because if Brad was able to do that in front of two people and still get no heat, Brad's doing something really, really right with this tribe. Hmm. And I think Ricard might have missed that by throwing his name out like that. Yeah. And I don't really know why he threw his name out. I mean, well, again, I'm, I'm sure we'll find out very soon. But um, how, how do you like Shan? I guess Shan, not Chantel. Um, I, I really I like apologize, her. John Millsip. I love her. I know. Yeah. Go Canadians. Also, go. Erica nailed the puzzle. So the puzzle. go Canadians all around. Yes. The um, Canadians are taking over. Yeah. Yeah. The Canadians are going to be the final, final survivor. Yes. Um, I, I think, she, I think she did really well from what I could see. She seemed to balance the, she had a really good confessional, which is probably the only one that I heard where she was like, I'm in an amazing position and I'm on top because I'm the swing vote, but I'm also on the bottom because I'm kind of the swing vote. I feel like she said something of that nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then she said something about being in the middle. I thought that just showed a lot of self-awareness. <laughs> and I think on a tiny tribe of six where everyone was sort of flinging each other's names out there, she didn't really seem to be in much trouble at, at any point. Did you hear, did you hear her doing her, um, humming? Her Why, music? What was she humming about? She was humming her villain music when she's up to no good. That's the music that plays in her head. She has a soundtrack. I was I wondering, loved, I wrote, I why her. is she humming? She, that's I awesome. Her. I thought she was great. Honestly, I kind of hated that the green tribe lost because I liked all of them probably. And this is not because of anything she did, but I don't feel like we got much from her was Jeannie. We got Jeannie no. about her, her wife and her mom. And that was a really good story, but that's all we got from her. Yeah. She Jeannie was very felt, quiet. She felt clueless to the situation tonight. Brad, we got a little bit more with his father, and then we actually got him with with Chantel and with uh, with Ricard. So he felt a little bit more involved. So if I was going for my own personal interest, I would have wanted Jeannie to go tonight. Uwa was probably the tribe that I liked the most out of all of them tonight. Um, Yase and and Luvu, I liked them, but it wasn't to the same level that I was that I was in with the other tribes. Yeah. Should we go? Should we go talk about the other tribes? I know Luvu's the blue tribe, right? We like understandably Luvu. didn't get what Luvu forgot to unhook their anchor and still somehow went like 40 feet in the water, but they yeah. didn't unhook their anchor. Is that what the, is that what they were yelling about at the beginning? Yeah, that's why they couldn't paddle, they didn't unhook their anchor. Oh, wow. See, I was yeah. leaning over to our dear friend Jamal and I was like, is it really that hard to paddle? So that makes a lot of sense why they were Jamal's over there like, oh, the worst thing. So yeah. hard, so difficult. After that, I took a nap on Survivor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I hope he's listening. Uh, but I should anyway, listen at some point. I'm sure I'll hate point. that. Shout out. That's all. But, That's um, great. <laughs> no, so they just messed up there. Yase couldn't find the paddle. Total like, hot mess. Total hot mess. So let's let's talk about the Yase tribe because we definitely talked about this other tribe more. And I kind of want to do uh, like a quick because, I mean, we're doing this late. It's going to be midnight soon. So we don't want to be here for hours and hours and hours. But let's talk about this Yase tribe and, and kind of do like a quick around the horn of these people. So we mm. start off. And we get Eric. Eric ends up going home tonight. We didn't get much of a story from Eric. Uh, he called himself yeah. Abraham, not Eric. So that's a lot of last name, a lot of nicknames, a lot of last names, a lot of that. But so we have Evie first saying that she doesn't mind guys. That's kind of our intro to this yellow tribe. We don't really get much else. Then they go and we find their dilemma. And David Vochi really mm -hmm. does not want to do this, but is forced to do it with Xander. Mm -hmm. I thought this was such a great moment for Xander and David. 
And I actually feel like they're going to go very, very far on this tribe. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they probably team up with Liana and and Evie or Liana and Tiffany or Tiffany and Evie or some formation of that. And I think they're going to go deep because this did not work as much against uh, David as it possibly could have. His name mm -hmm. never came up. Xander's name never came up. Yeah. Nobody was talking about them and they got the job done. And at the end of the day, that's going to make you look good in your tribe's eyes. Yeah. And man, Xander did a lot like physically yeah. has done. So quite did Dan a bit. Danny was in the same boat. It makes yeah, no sense. Danny, Danny, Danny did both. Yeah. That's tough. Um, yeah. And I think like David slash Voce was somebody who I think I and everyone thought was going to be in a lot of trouble early on, but I think like, I think his personality is really shining through. And I think, it, I think he'll also be like a kind of fun villain. Like he's the guy who's going to correct Jeff at tribal council, but like, you know, I like, that's what I want. Like, it's kind of fun to have two different types of villains. If Ricard and him are going to go both fall into that. But Xander is someone who I kind of had low expectations for, but he's a lot of fun. I, I think he's a great ad. And I like that. He's, I like that. He's playing down how smart he is he yeah. says the prisoner's dilemma to us he says a game of chicken to his tribe mm. that's that's some that's some thinking about how you're presenting yourself to your tribe and unlike fabio this is a guy who actually is like he's that smart like he's somebody yeah. who really could do something if you're like i feel like he's got a lot going for him I think David, I think David and Ricard are going to be our villains of this season, but in a very fun way. I think Shan is also that similar type of fun villain. Yeah. And I think what Jeff said at the beginning of this episode is what's most important. He said, we just want to have fun this year. Let's get away from this Dan Spilo bullshit. Like, let's get away from that type of stuff. Let's have and, fun. And, and let's make sure that we're putting the right people on the show. And let's make sure that it's a group that is going to be enjoyable to watch. And we're not going to sit here gouging our eyes out every week going, oh, my God, why won't they just get rid of this person who I despise? Yeah. Let's make that happen. And I think we're seeing that level of granted back in the Marquesas times. Maybe you were saying things a little bit differently than you're saying now. But it seems like we're going back to that Boston Rob type villain, that Sean Rector type villain. Um, yeah. where they're a villain, but we, they're also a fan favorite. That seems to be the way we're going. Yeah. They're, I mean, to be as blunt as possible, it's like, I don't think they're casting any assholes. Yeah. Like, I think they're casting people who we got time. We got 12. Weeks yeah. Left. yeah. Let, let, let's, let's wait. Yeah. Talk. Call, someone take that clip and then show it to me in two months. Yeah. You should give me a little extra. The yeah, but, I, here, but. <laughs> but I think, and maybe Je I know Jeff like tells the contestants, like play, like it's your second time, like go mm -hmm. out there and like shoot your shot. I bet Jeff also told them like, go have fun. Like we like make this fun, even though we're going to torture you and take your flint away, but be fun. Like th that's mm -hmm. like the theme that I want from this season. And I think the players know how to do that because I think a lot of these people like are just so meta at this point, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Um, to speak to Evie, um, is it Evie or Evie? I couldn't hear. I think it's Evie. Evie. I think I could be wrong. I think, um, they were great. I, mm -hmm. I think like we, Evie was like kind of a narrator of this episode. There was a lot of tension, a lot of like attention. And I don't think like th there was a confidence there, but I didn't see any, like, you know, any of the quote unquote flags that I think a lot of people have been talking about. I thought, I thought Evie was awesome tonight and I'm really excited to, to continue to watch. I think that, and it's kind of what I said in my podcast with, with, uh, the other day when we did the fantasy draft and Evie is on my team. I also had Sarah and Sarah's gone. And that was my second round pick. <laughs> you and I, you and I had a tough, tough Whoops. night, but I think Evie played up her bio a lot. And yeah. I think that her, I think they knew her, that. Yeah. I think we knew that. And I think her personality on the show is going to be one thing and her personality in the bio is going to be another thing. And her personality in real life. Gonna be that. But she, she knows how to play the game. And I mm -hmm. think that based on her experience uh, in life, I think that she actually is going to have a lot of legs now after seeing this episode i think she's got i think she's got a pretty good shot to really get this under control and um and kind of run her tribe a little bit her and liana is a pair that i'm looking at uh i'm a big liana person before the season we didn't get a lot from her tonight but we got enough and i like this liana evie pair and i like this david xander pair and i kind of like mm -hmm. that tiffany is just floating i think this is a good tribe i just yeah. worry for losing two people a week oh my god what am i gonna do here yeah, I th I don't think we will. Did they say that they're going to do that? I don't think so. I yeah. don't think so. I think ultimately I, this well, was just to move it up. I really liked Tiffany. I've been really high on Tiffany. I think um, 
I, I know she was like kind of in the running to go home tonight, but she had a confessional that pretty much said, I don't want to get blindsided. I feel like I'm okay, but I really don't want to seem cocky. That is the kind, that's the mindset of somebody who is super self-aware and how they're playing. That's somebody who knows the game really well and not in a, like, I need to overplay so that I stay here for three more days or two more days. She was very calm. She was very collected. She probably knew as soon as she was on the cast that she was going to be targeted early. I think she handled that really well and only got one vote news from the person who was unanimously voted out. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's good. I mean, I think Tiffany's got her finger on the pulse for sure. And I think that this group, this group of five, if they can stay together, I think that that's going to be, um, yeah, I think that's going to, I think that that could really work for this group. Like if yeah. it starts being one tribe at a time, I think I like this group. I think Ua is honestly in the most trouble, which is a shame. Cause like I said, I like them the most. So that's, yeah. that's a tough one. And we're not swapping. I think we're not swapping, everyone knows yeah. that we're not swapping. So yeah. you're, you're going to live and die by your tribes. Yeah. And, and let's go over to look at Luvu and we had Deshaun and Danny. Deshaun, we really got almost nothing from. Really, yeah. the story about Deshaun was just that he was looking for the idol with Danny. They were looking for the, they were doing the challenge and they were looking for the idol. And then Deshaun came back and was pissed that Nasir was talking about him. That was really all we got from Deshaun. And he had a really, really quiet episode. Danny had a really big episode. Nasir had a really middle of the road. Like it looked like he was doing something good for his tribe. Then it looked yeah. like he was screwing over his tribe. Sydney seemed like she was narrating this tribe. Sydney was quiet though. Sydney was quiet. Heather was quiet. And I can't even think of the name of the other. Who's the other female in this tribe? Erica. Erica. And Erica was still pretty quiet. Like, like this was definitely the quieter tribe, which always yeah. happens when. They which makes them, sense. So. But like, I mean, the, all I have about Erica is she like nailed that challenge. So that was awesome. Sydney was, you know, narrator were quiet, but like quips of funny. I think she'll definitely mm -hmm. be funny. Um, Heather, I don't need, did Heather get a confessional? She got like, like one, one or, or two. two. I mean, they did a good job of getting everybody in there, but I think she only had like one or two. Definitely. This was definitely the quietest tribe. Definitely the hardest one to keep up with. And Danny was definitely the star of this tribe, mainly because he did so much, but he was definitely the star of this tribe. Yeah. I know. I think Nasir is like a little bit of a pot stirrer. I think like, I think that's kind of fun, but Nasir, I think Nasir was the one who was like, they're hunting for idols. Like, what should we do about it? Which I think good, like is good and bad, but um, I, I he wasn't like, the star of the episode, like I was kind of expecting, but then again, he was on the winning tribe. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that, uh, you know, maybe he's being set up to have to overcome something. I don't know, but it wasn't, it wasn't great. It wasn't yeah. great for, for him after it was like, he looked like he was doing something good for the tribe. And then it looked like he wasn't doing something so good for the tribe. So I don't know. I mean, I think, I mean, Sydney went straight to Deshaun and straight to Danny and said, Hey, this is what's happening. That's not good. So yeah. Yeah. How did they take that? <laughs> Who? Deshaun and Danny? Deshaun they were Danny. angry. Especially Deshaun. Deshaun was really the one who got more of the anger there. Danny doesn't seem like he's letting anything bother him. And as if, as if you're correct, and he has been trying to get on the show for a very long time, he is playing this like he's been trying to get on the show for a very long time. That's for that's sure. awesome. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't realize that's how it went. Yes, yeah, Sydney. Uh, yeah, well, Sydney. Sydney you're fine, out. fine this week. <laughs> Immediately. I know. I know. And, and and that's what I think is interesting. When I look at the, 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 um, the Yase tribe, I don't know how that one's going to shake out. Eric Abraham went home today, but I don't think they vote out David or Xander next week. I don't no. think they necessarily vote out Liana or Ebby next week. And I don't think Tiffany is a guaranteed out next week. So there's gonna be a lot going on with that. When I look at the, the Lubu tribe, if they were to lose, I have no idea where that's going. And then when I look at the Ua tribe, they were such a hot mess. Is JT is JD really like the next person out of the game? I don't know, but or is Ricard overplaying? Or is or or is Genie or, alone? Genie like, alone. Is Brad gonna end up shooting himself? It looks like he's sprinting down the beach next time he's hiding yeah. in a bush. I don't know. Like, are these things gonna start hurting people? I don't know. And and I think that's what's fascinating is we just watched two hours where I felt like we got a really good feel for a lot of the players, but I still don't really know where the tribes are gonna shake up in a good way, in a way of it doesn't feel like it's already predetermined and we're saying, oh, just one less, just one less. What are we gonna do? Yeah, I'm my power rankings for next week. Well, I'll have to rewatch the episode, but I'm kind of confused because I, in yeah. a good way, like you said, like I don't, all the alliances feel very loose, but not in a like voting block way, just in a, like, we're still getting to know each other kind of way. And yeah. it's, I think the premiere, this is the premiere. So bear with us here, but the like overplaying and the speed and like the 26 days, obviously we don't even notice the 26 days, but 
it doesn't feel like everyone is immediately overplaying, which is no. nice. No, and and they went to tribal council tonight at at final um or on day three, like they normally yeah. do. I mean, they actually went to tribal later than season 40 went to their first tribal. So like it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be a breakneck speed for most of it, but it might be more of these double boots and things like that rather than, um, than anything else. So I don't know. I was very, I was very pleased with how tonight went. Um, still confused how the shot in the dark is actually going to end up working, but I think it's something that's yeah. worth watching. Uh, this beware advantage or whatever it's called. I'm excited about that one. We don't know anything about the idols, so we're still waiting on that. Um, but you know, I'm happy that we have two people who have extra advantages, like extra votes, but it actually made sense, like how they got it and how that went about and that it was a very easy situation where they could have gotten nothing. And, um, I like, I love this idea. And this is, this is a big thing. I love this idea that when you lose something, you lose something. You don't just lose the challenge. You lose your flint. You lose this. You lose a survivor element. I think that's a really good twist to introduce to the game. And I think that's going to make a big impact moving forward. I really do. I, I, mm -hmm. I really like this and I like the way that this is going because then it's, you can't just get comfortable. If you lose, you lose something. And maybe there'll yeah. be other things you can gain throughout so that you're not losing the most important thing. But I like that it's kind of stripping them back to season one, season two era and making it difficult for them because the seasons in Fiji were starting to get too easy. They were just walking out there with a bunch of fruit and a bunch of rice and they were easily going through this game. I'm very happy to see what's going on with this. Yeah, and it, it was cool to see like past players' live reactions. Like Aaron from 39 leaned over to Jamal and he was like, they don't get any rice. Like yeah. he was like shocked. Like, Aaron was eating full meals. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that like, I, I think this, this does a good job of like making it a lot more difficult, but hopefully not like debilitating for the mm -hmm. players. And it, it, this will make the challenges mean something like you will lose your Flint yeah. if you don't win. So it, I, I, I think it's exciting. This is a lot. This is a lot more exciting than fire tokens for me. Agreed. Agreed. I think that a lot of this is very visual. I don't think it's as confusing as we thought it was going to be. Um, Someone, Logan Leger makes a good point here. Losing the Flint means players like Tommy don't slack off in challenges. I'm, yeah. I, I was taking that as this makes people not want to throw challenges yeah. or not, you know, not hide, hide themselves um, athletically. So yeah. it's a great point for sure. For sure. No, I'm, I'm interested to see how all these things are going to play out. I think, I think that we have a lot. Hi, Troy there. Zan. Yeah, Alex, we, Alex is over here. We're not going to say Troy Zan's name. We're not going to say Troy Zan's name. And he said, we couldn't word. possibly ignore you. We couldn't possibly ignore him. Um, but, but yes, um, no, I, I really, I really think that, that moving forward, they've laid the groundwork. And, and to me, this is like when a, when a great TV show starts to feel like it's getting stale and it says, how can we flip this? How can we, how can we do something like, you know, when law starts telling it from whatever, and I won't spoil it in case you haven't watched it, but how do we change that to make that happen in that way? And, and that's when things start to get exciting. When you can make something fresh, we're 41 seasons in this felt fresh. And, and there's a lot of new twists, a lot of new advantage. Where I was like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. Maybe I do want to see how that's going to work out moving forward. And I want to see how these people are going to play the game. I think that there's a lot of potential on this cast. I think we have a lot of great characters across the board. Uh, players like Evie and Ricard and, and Danny and Brad. They're all bringing very different things to the table. Danny is a straight shooting uh, guy here who's just going to come out and play the game as physically as possible. And he's playing on a season that is probably the most diverse in the history of the show. And he's coming out and he's just playing this. Like, it seems like he's just, he wants to play this like straight shooter, old school survivor game of, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to do any of that. It's going to be interesting to see how that works on a season where your main villain might be Ricard. Yeah. How do you, how are you going to do that? Because that's not an old school survivor player. That is a very new school survivor player. Yeah. How do these two things mesh once they actually start to collide? And it's, it's like extra fun this season to have the old school person, because I've seen a lot of people like making like Ken from uh, millennials versus Gen X comparisons. I just think like, regardless of how it works, it's, it's a good like comparison point for mm -hmm. just how, like how futuristic this season kind of is. Yeah. Yeah. It has a good feel to it. And I like the editing. I like the backgrounds. It reminded me of the early seasons. We used to see the people outside of the game. And they got off the plane or they did whatever they did. Like I, 
They did. They're like Alexa is yeah. a talent acquisition. Lex yeah. plays drums or something. Yeah. And like, like he's standing there, like in his like we saw David in the hospital without a mask on. So when did they film that and where? Yeah. But uh-huh. but like we see these moments of people with their loved ones, or we saw JD running track and. And I don't think we saw a background on Evie or Liana, but I feel like those are coming. I feel like this is going to be something we're going to mm-hmm. see throughout the show as the show keeps moving forward. I really like that. Like, I think that creates an interesting element of like, you're creating more of a human human now. These aren't yeah. just people who every now and then say, I like coffee. And then Chelsea goes home. These are people <laughs> who like really, really, really feel like people. That's a good start. And I also like, like for this whole come on in guys thing, whatever, however you feel about whether they should say it or they shouldn't say it or whatever. And Jeff's telling you to tweet at him kind of like that. We had differing opinions on this from people who are kind of in the same community here. Like, I think that that's yeah. cool. I thought that, that was we great. Got that because there's also these, these stigmas and all of that that come with, with, Oh, they're going to cast more diverse. They're going to cast this or they're going to cast that or they're not. And, we th- we start to think, oh, they're casting this person who is going to think this exact way, or they're going to believe this exact thing. I like that. Yes, you're casting diverse, and just because you fit into whatever whatever character they're putting you as, you can you're still going to have layers to you. You still have your own individuality. You, you still have your individuality, and I think that's really really important um, moving forward. Because you got to have the individuality of these players where the, it's not like Ricard and Evie are going to go fight each other over this. It's just something that they're not going to necessarily agree on where if you just saw them in the pre in the pregame bios, you'd say they'd probably agree on whatever Jeff's going to bring up with this come on in guys thing. It's cool to see that that's not the case because yeah. it's letting us know that like, yes, like not everybody like people aren't people don't just fit into these these easy square peg square hole like that's not how it works. And so. I'm very excited to see how this cast is going to play together. And hopefully we're kind of done with the COVID stuff because the first 20 minutes of this episode was like COVID, 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 COVID. And like, I, think I get we're, it was the buildup, but I think we're done with it. I, I have a feeling we're done. I think Jeff was also just like, the, again, there was a lot of Jeff this episode, but I think yeah. in a weird way, it was also like trying to hype us up. Like, I, I don't know how long they were on that, that boat for, which looked awesome by the way. Yeah. But um, I also liked having a marooning where they weren't like, it was a different marooning. Like it wasn't a marooning where they were just like chucking chickens to go drown, which is the most upsetting thing. Um, They were looking for colored oars. That was brand new, but a new twist on the most, you know, classic survivor event. Yeah. And, and one that it's like, how could they possibly put a twist on this? Well, they found a way. Yeah. And Ultimately, that's what Survivor has to keep doing in order to stay fresh and for order for us to want to keep watching. Yeah. So, but to to be clear, like Bravo, this was yeah. awesome. Very I a lot. But I am confident we will hear a lot of complaints, and I'm sure we will have some. But this was great. I think a lot of people, myself included, were really scared at the idea of all these changes. But I, mm-hmm. this was this was fantastic. Yeah, I think they did a really good job with it, and I'm excited to see where it's going to go moving forward. I think I think there's, like I keep saying, and I know I just keep saying the words over and over again, but I think there's so much potential, so much potential moving forward here, and I'm really excited to see how it's going to play out. Yeah, it's going to be great. So, yeah. All right, Alexa, what else do we have to talk about, or do we have nothing left? I don't really have much left. Um, my notes, again, are pretty discombobulated, but we've pretty much – oh, did Jeff – say what's the vibe did he i don't know that okay I, didn't hear. I couldn't tell if that was something i misheard or not um if he did that's upsetting but i hope he enjoyed what's it. up jeff like calm what's down the buddy vibe? Yeah. yeah um yeah so i i don't know much i'm really again really happy with this episode um tonight was great this premiere was great um just really excited to keep on going yeah all right. Well, Alexa, what are we doing on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern? Sunday time? morning at 11 a.m. We are starting our predictions and power rankings back up with an amazing, amazing guest. We will be joined by season 39's Janet Carbon for our first uh, first predictions and power rankings of the season. So we're going to be ranking the uh, remaining 16 players. It's kind of crazy. We're already at 16 players left. Um yeah. And Janet's going to be a great guest. We've actually, we've never had her on before. So we're excited to start with someone new. Yes, exactly. And if you're a $20 patron, patreon.com backslash survivor specialist. If you're a $20 patron, you get to participate in the power rankings game 
Email us the power. Email us your power rankings each week. We're not gonna be hunting everybody down. We're not gonna be doing all that. We used to do that. You have to email us. Don't DM us. Yes, email us, Alexa. What's the email address? Survivor specialists at gmail.com. There you go. Simple uh, and effective. Very simple. So that's what we got. Um, and we'll see everybody on Sunday. Good premiere. Can't wait to see how this season's gonna play out. And we'll all talk soon. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Become a patron.